yeah, I didn't say I would watch it, but I did. I'm not exactly thrilled that I did, but I don't regret watching it. I guess that's the best I can say about it. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for the Falcon and Winter Soldier series by Disney+. Plus. This came to an end a few days ago, and I admittedly didn't have the chance to review it because I actually had to go off and do something. Now I'm getting to put my two cents in. To be honest, even though as harsh as I was on WandaVision, I think it was a little bit better than this one because while this one did have some good moments, it had a lot of good pieces here and there. It also had a lot of dry bits. This show followed Falcon and Winter Soldier Bucky as they were dealing with kind of the aftermath of Falcon's choice to not take up the mantle of Captain America, even though Steve gave him the shield. And we're seeing kind of the socio-political economics of what's happening with the world, not only in terms of a new Captain America being chosen, played by White Russell, but also what's been happening with the world since the blip happened. Obviously, since half of the world disappeared, and they had to make do with what they had, and they actually became better for it, and then the other half came back. Now, obviously, the world is in kind of a little bit of turmoil, and this is something that hasn't really been talked about yet, so this is a new aspect. In terms of how the things were coming back together, obviously, there were some people who weren't agreeing with how the governments and the world were coming back, and so that's why there's these Flag Smashers, which, yes, that is a terrible name, are doing these terrorist attacks to try and return the world to what it is, and I will say, First off, these are some of the worst villains that MCU has ever put out. They try so hard to make you sympathize with them, even the actress that they chose. They're making you try to sympathize with these people. The whole idea that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, that's trying to be in place here with this character, but it's such garbage. Her plight and her cause is completely ridiculous. And at the end of the show, when she dies and they try to frame it to make you feel bad about her, you don't give a shit. When she got shot, I was like, cool. Is expecting this, didn't care, don't care, move on. But now talking about things that were done well, I actually think that Sam's transition to Captain America, while kind of arduous, was actually really well done in most places. I liked how he is using his kind of banter slash aggression with Bucky as a means to try and avoid the obvious topic of him taking on the mantle, the whole role that Steve gave to him. By the end, you really see him take that fold, like when he has that conversation with Bucky about you, if you want to make up for the things, if you want to get better, do the work, when he is trying to have the conversation with the terrorist Ginger, and then at the end of the series when he's having the uh, a little bit heavy-handed kind of conversation with the political figures and being like, hey, we should try and do better, blah, blah, blah. Bucky had some room, some kind of potential for a lot of really cool bits to him. Like, I was really expecting to see a lot more from him, considering mainly he was really a tool in this. And even at the end, when he finally makes amends and he tries to go and apologize to that guy for killing his son all, that year, all those years ago when he was the Winter Soldier, and then it just cuts to the figures and the smoke and tears, and that's it. You don't really see what the aftermath of that conversation was. We don't see if Bucky actually got forgiven by him. How does that conversation end? I don't know how it ends and I wanted to really see that bit I thought that bit was a bit yeah and then a character who really had a fantastic up and then a kind of wet fart of a down was Wyatt Russell as the new Captain America or the US agent he started off really good because I felt sympathetic I like that he had Lamar as his his compass his moral compass and as we see him kind of go through the stripes of trying to be the new Captain America, not only dealing with Falcon and Winter Soldier, but also just the whole political issue of it, we see that Lamar is keeping him straight, even if maybe a little bit off the, off the path. But then when Lamar dies, that's when things go bad. And actually, probably the best episode in this entire show was episode four with how it ended with him full-on killing that guy with the shield and that shot with the shield covered in blood which let's be real here it should have been covered in blood many a times by now that was a really good bit and then it continued on into episode five with that fight that was okay in some shots and then terrible 
and others that there was these really weird up close shots i kept going back and forth between thinking this was great and thinking this was terrible and then after it it's nothing he doesn't really get any kind of punishment for what he's done he just all of a sudden just gets a new job and there's no reprimands like you're not saying that he should have gotten punished for killing a terrorist in public i just thought there would have been a hell of a lot more fallout for that it just seems that everyone kind of forgets about him at the end and i thought that was just really strange and then there was the whole isaiah bradley thing which was a bit of a whoa apparently this is obviously based on the comics and apparently isaiah was actually before cap in the comics but in this one they kind of made him this other captain america during the cold war and how he was put in prison for 30 years and we see how just he was treated like shit i like how he is kind of a mirror of what could become of sam of what could happen to him if he doesn't really take on the responsibility of also just having things go not his way but I did like how at the end we saw Isaiah get the recognition for what he deserves, but immediately you would think that anyone walking up to this statue and see, oh hey, this guy used to be Captain America too. Oh, he was put in jail for 30 years. What the fuck's that about US government? I don't know, something more than just a statue of him, kind of a public announcement that yeah, we fucked this dude over. I don't know, I thought that would have been a little bit more prominent. Overall, Falcon and Winter Soldier had a lot of bits that were decent. I like the Zemo bit, actually. I have to say Zemo was really well utilized in this. I thought he was actually going to be really heavy-handed or just not well used at all, but in fact, he was used a lot better than Sharon Carter, who we all guessed was the Shadow Broker. Was it even in any fucking doubt? And at the end, too, what was that post-credit thing with her? What does that even mean? That doesn't mean anything, essentially. It's like, cool, we knew this. And that's when I come back to the kind of ideology of describing this show as a wet fart because it started off with some potential sure it took a little bit of a ways to get there but then the middle was really solid and then it just faltered there's a lot of homages to previous works both in the comics and in the show hell when sam comes through the window with the wings and the shield that's exactly how steve rogers came into the building at the beginning of civil war so that was a really cool hearkening back to that stuff but honestly i thought this was kind of very middle of the road again as i said with wandavision they are making these shows with the idea that yeah you could watch them and you would get a little bit more but it's not entirely essential until they make these shows 100 percent essential for you to watch to understand what's going on they're going to continue to be this middle of the road thing the last chance any of them have is loki and this will both have some funny storytelling and some visual elements so maybe but honestly i don't care i'm just gonna keep on watching invincible which by the way if you guys haven't seen invincible yet you really should it's really freaking good it's almost over but you should watch it in the end falcon and winter soldier wasn't a complete loss but at the same time it wasn't really an achievement at least in my opinion i thought that it was it should have been a little longer things didn't wrap up as well as they could have some things were really heavy-handed some characters weren't utilized and your entire villain aspect of this whole series was someone that you couldn't side with someone that you were immediately and entirely against they went from having like a hundred people in the fifth episode to having five of them in the final episode what the hell happened with that maybe certain things were affected by covid i know that, that apparently there was actually a bit of storyline in the first episode that was dropped that they changed it around because of covid circumstances so maybe that might have been why but otherwise i'm gonna give falcon and winter soldier a three out of seven i really didn't find this as interesting as i thought it would i would watch the middle of it maybe but aside from that eh, i just feel like it was kind of really really middle of the road i'd rather watch wandavision again i didn't think i'd ever say that in the end guys that's all from me i hope you enjoyed this review if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe otherwise see you guys next time thanks for watching the video my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads it's been a while but i'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie thanks to a successful kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.